cannabis different from other forms of pain medication? People and patients are using cannabis not just for pain management. They're using cannabis to help manage pain, but also sleep promotion, and also to help with mood. Now, many of the medications that we've used in the past to manage pain in particular, such as opioids and anti-inflammatory agents, have had a lot of side effects. And people are now looking to cannabis as perhaps a more natural mechanism of treatment and perhaps less toxic. What are the differences between CBD and THC? It's been called the plant of a thousand molecules. And the two molecules amongst all those thousands that have been most studied are THC and CBD. They are in the category of cannabinoid and we have cannabinoid receptors in our bodies. And these molecules are able to click onto the receptors in our body and then activate an effect. Now, depending upon the strain of the cannabis plant, you will have varying amounts of THC or CBD. Some plants will have high THC, up to 20% or maybe even 30%, whereas others will have much lower THC and higher CBD. What are the benefits when using cannabis? I think certainly for the rheumatology patient, the most important benefit is symptom relief. And let's be very clear, Cannabis should not be a treatment that should replace management for a real inflammatory arthritis, but might be considered for symptom relief. So the most important reason why people are using cannabis is to reduce pain. And when it does reduce pain, we have reports of very, very good effect. What are the health effects that we need to be concerned about when we are thinking of using cannabis? Patients with rheumatic diseases should not inhale. They should not smoke. We have ample evidence that smoking and inhalation is not good if you have a rheumatic disease. The second thing is that when you have used any form of cannabis, particularly with even a tiny bit of THC, there are what we call psychoactive effects. And the psychoactive effects are the effects that make you feel a little buzzy in your head, maybe a little difficulty with concentration, and very importantly, a little difficulty with your motor actions. We have to be cautious about the cognitive as well as the psychoactive effects. And then we also need to think about long-term effects. And we really have very little information regarding long-term effects of use of medical cannabis. But we do know that THC is an addictive substance. How is research going with regards to cannabis? That's such an important question. The traditional way that we do research by randomized controlled trials is very, very difficult for cannabinoids in general. Only 200 patients with rheumatic diseases have been formally studied in randomized controlled trials. So we've had to look at observational studies to give us some indication. And when you look at the way in which we understand evidence, that is by doing meta-analyses and systematic reviews, these unfortunately are not very positive for cannabis. And that is because they're very difficult to do. What do people need to understand? about cannabis regarding a treatment option. First point is it's not a treatment for everyone. Number one. Number two, as a healthcare professional, I think that we must be understanding, open and empathetic to our patients' needs. I really, really strongly advocate that your healthcare professional, either your nurse or your physician, should be the person who is guiding you regarding medical cannabis use. This is not the domain of the dispensary staff. We know that we don't have any magic treatment that can remove pain completely. But many patients will say, if I can just get a little, a little attenuation, a little relief of that pain, it makes such a big difference. 